welcome back to my channel my name is Nicole if you're new here today we're just going to talk about basically how to become a front-end web developer this guide more so focuses on kind of like the lifespan of the whole journey so we're not going to get too specific about different technologies but I'll leave some links in the description box if you want to learn a little bit first let's just throw out there what exactly web development is it's basically just the process and development of websites for the internet there's so many different kinds of developers but web development specifically focuses on like the non-design aspects of a website which means using programming different scripting languages markup to basically create functionality for the website a front-end developer is someone who specializes in kind of the look and the layout and basically everything that the user sees when they go to the website. A back-end developer is someone who builds all of the technology that really powers that those components so that they come together and it's like they're the reason the website exists in the first place. But there's so many other types of developers there's mobile developers games data devops wordpress there's so many different areas of web development that you can get into so today we're going to be focusing on front end web development because it has html css and javascript and those are really the core languages that you need to really know before you get into anything if you want to be able to build something so first you want to do is pick a method of how you're going to learn the skills that you need. Again, our, the skills that we need are going to be HTML, CSS, and JavaScript just to get started. Um, you can either do self-taught, you can go to a boot camp, or you can pick college. Um, I would say self-taught boot camp will really get it done for you. Um, you'll be able to get into a career if you pick those two options, or you can do college. Self-taught means that you're using a platform online to learn the skills. Bootcamp is, it could be online or in person, somewhere you go and maybe do like a six week intensive, or sorry, six month or five month, however long the bootcamp is to learn those skills. And they do have a cost associated with them. It's not going to be as expensive as college, but they also might offer scholarships and things like that. And as we all know, you can always do the college option as well. You can do computer science, but like I said, self-taught and boot camp will really give you the skills that you need to get a job. And after you pick which method that you want to learn, which I would personally recommend self-taught, um, you would want to pick a platform of how you're going to learn these skills. So that means what website are you going to use to get these skills? Um, I have so many listed in the description box and you can kind of do your own research to figure out which one you would like best. You can do udemy.com, Academy, Treehouse. Um, there's paid ones and free ones. I think once you really get invested, you really are going to have to spend a little bit of money. So I don't think the free ones are always going to give you everything that you need, to be honest. It's just how it is. You have to kind of spend money to make money kind of thing. Um, it's also important to understand how you learn. Do you learn visually? Um, do you prefer to watch videos or read books? So that will also go along with picking a platform to learn. After you do that, number three, I would suggest to really set up a designated study space, whether that means you need to buy a new desk, um, get, a new, uh, get a new computer chair, or maybe you have a library space that you can study in, or maybe it's just setting out a place on your kitchen table that you can go to consistently. Whatever it is, make sure your space is a designated workspace. Make sure you have your light and everything ready to go. Coffee break. Also, when you're setting up your study space, you don't have to have the most expensive laptop or anything like that. Um, if you're able to maybe borrow one from a friend who's not using it, or just use the libraries um, if they are open and if they're allowing people to use them. So it can be a little tricky, but you don't need the latest and greatest to get the studying done. So the second part of this would be to prepare for your learning process. This is probably the most, one of the most important ones. I'm not saying I did all of these steps perfectly, but I wish I had. Um, so does that mean that you need to work less? Do you need to maybe move in with family so you're not working as much? Or do you need to find childcare? Maybe some one of your friends or a family member comes over to watch your child on the weekends just so you can have some concentrated study time. Obviously a lot easier said than done, but these are things that you have to think about before you dive into it because they will come up and then it's like you have to deal with it. You have to interrupt your learning to then deal with it. 
So number four, now that we've kind of got those things established, you want to set up, set up a study schedule. So whatever method you're learning, you want to make sure you're laying out everything, like how long is it going to take you to learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, um, how long is it going to take you to start some portfolio projects? How long is it going to take you to craft your portfolio and a resume and do some interview practice? You really want to realistically think it maybe it depends on your work schedule, just it depends on your just your lifestyle, if you have children and things like that, or other commitments. You want to make it realistic, maybe six to eight months, four to five months. It really depends. It's not a set time frame. But you want to make it realistic, but you also want to challenge yourself to just get it done at the same time. And sometimes depending on the method that you pick, it will actually tell you, it'll be like, hey, this is the HTML portion that you're learning. Um, he here's a breakdown and this is how long each module might take. So then you'll be able to kind of get a good idea. I will show, I'm going to insert a picture in personally. This is exact, this is not the exact notebook that I use, but this is exactly how, how I would write it down. Um, just to really kind of keep on top of it. Did I fluctuate every now and then? Yes. So I wasn't as diligent as I wanted to be, but this really kind of kept me on track. Number five, cut out the distractions, whatever they are for you. If it's a gatherings, um, any um, hobbies that are time consuming, phone, social media, screen time, cut it out. Just completely eliminate it right now. You have something that you wanna get done and it's going to take extreme focus and you just need to cut it all out, just temporarily. I'm not saying you can't have fun and things like that, but you don't wanna to be too consumed in other things where it's taking you away from bringing yourself to that next level. Number six, I would say to get a support system, whether that's family, friends, a partner, whoever, just really let them know what's going on so that they can encourage you along the way. Be careful who you tell, you know, of course, um, if there's people that you think might make it harder for you or discourage you, you can go ahead and kind of just figure that out for your own life. But you just really want to get some support because it might not be easy all the time. And it's good to have somebody to kind of lean on. Um, another way you can get support is by joining a virtual code group. For me, this was the whole difference between me even getting a job and learning the skills. Um, I joined a women's coding group um, in my city at the time. We were meeting locally. Um, I think it was two times a month we were meeting and I would ask questions. I would let them know the things that I did know or I wanted to learn, we'd all share and talk and drink coffee. And it was a really good time. Right now, you can do those things virtually as well and still have them be effective. You can join a code group that's local in your area or maybe just anywhere. Or, and you wanna make sure these groups are not too large. You don't want them to be so large that you, you feel like you can't reach out to anybody. You want them to know your name. You want them to like know about you, you know what I mean? So for number seven, this is kind of after that you start learning and you're going about your way with your courses and things like that, you wanna pick five websites to start building as your portfolio project. And I always say this time and time again, I got the five portfolio project ideas from Coding Phase. I'm gonna link the video just so you can watch it. Um, the way he explains it is very nice, so I would go ahead and watch that. I also have a video that gives you five different website project ideas. I provide 10 different ideas and I would just pick five from those to get started. And you really want to think quality over quantity when it comes to this. You don't want to just kind of do all these projects and then none of them are up to par. I honestly think two great projects are more likely to get you hired over 10 projects that are kind of just like, you know. So number eight, you want to start building your portfolio site. So this is after you've done all your projects and I wouldn't suggest doing your portfolio site before the projects because it's just going to be empty. You want to make sure you have all of your stuff ready and then you can just plug it into the portfolio site. You can use a platform like Wix or you can do it yourself. It doesn't really matter. It's just it's important for it to look good and clean. And then once you build your portfolio site, purchase a domain name. Purchase a domain name. Don't be cheap, okay? Don't be cheap. Really represent yourself in a professional manner and have a nice domain for your site. And then this leads us to the next step, which is number nine, which is where you wanna start getting job ready. You can put your website information on your resume. You wanna put the finishing touches on your projects. You wanna get your resume and your cover letter together. Maybe have some a professional read those over for you. And then you wanna practice your interviewing skills and things like that. It doesn't matter how good your projects are if you can't really 
like speak about them. So make sure you're going through all of your projects and highlighting maybe some talking points about each one just in case you are asked about them. Okay, then you also want to take a break. Take a breather, take time to just unwind, indulge in something healthy that's really good and beneficial for you that can take your mind off of this because it can get it can really get stressful and it can get they can really burn you out if you're not like careful. So I would say after you're learning and you're getting all your stuff together, just take a little break before you dive into the job process. Number 10, this is your time to start researching um, different places that you want to work. So really use your network here. By now, you, you should have been in like a code group or something like that. And they'll be able to share with you some jobs that they might be able to recommend. Or you can ask them and just get the word out that you are looking now. And really don't apply everywhere. You really wanna be strategic um, with the jobs that you pick. Don't just apply to a job that's hiring just because, like you really wanna make sure that you can see yourself working at this place or maybe the location is not going to work for you. You don't wanna waste your time and their time by going through maybe an interview and them actually hiring you and then it's like, uh, I actually don't wanna work here. So really be diligent with that and pick somewhere that you really wanna work, check out their website and see if your vibe kinda of goes with their vibe or if the kind of work that they do you would also enjoy doing because you don't wanna just apply somewhere and then you're like, I'm probably gonna hate everything that I'm doing once I get hired. Just save yourself that energy, okay? So yes, so start the job process. And then these are just some final notes that I would say, I would say to enjoy the process as difficult as that might seem. There will be difficult days, but you really wanna take care of yourself at the same time so that you're not getting burnt out. Whatever those small pockets, maybe it's going to bed early, maybe it's eating well, maybe it's exercising, whatever you have to do to make sure that you're not going to burn yourself out. And then along this whole journey, it's actually okay if you discover that maybe this isn't for you. Not because you can't do it, but maybe it's just not for you. You you do all the studying and you're getting your portfolio and stuff together. And you're just like, maybe I don't really want to be a web developer. It's okay. You learn something from this and maybe what you learn you can take away to maybe try something different that you will like. So you don't have to feel like, okay, I did all this work, now I have to actually follow through on it. You don't have to feel that way. I remember before I even got into web development, I built this whole home staging company. Literally, I had a lawyer, I had forms, I had a DBA, I had the bank account. I was like ready to like open for business and then I got my website together and I realized the website was the most fun part of the process for me so I'm like you know what I'm just not gonna do that I'm just gonna trash that whole idea <laughs> so sometimes that happens take what you can from those experiences and just keep moving forward and during this whole process envision your end goal and that's really gonna keep you motivated um throughout the whole journey that's really all i have for you guys um i hope you can take something away from this i really hope you learned something from this if you have any questions leave them down in the description box don't forget to subscribe i know some of you are watching but you're not subscribed so go hit the subscribe button if there's any specific video you'd like to see leave it in the comment section and i will see you guys soon bye guys